Hi guys, welcome back to Old Man Jacob Photography. This week we're going to be taking a look at a macro lens made for phones. Uh, supposedly it's universal. I bought it off of Amazon. We're going to hop in and take a look at it. But first I wanted to explain why we're doing a video about this. Uh, macro photography can be a difficult thing for people to get into. A lot of people get interested in it, but there's a barrier of price for entry. Um, even if you're using a relatively inexpensive setup, uh, an old DSLR, maybe a $200 lens, a $60 flash, whatever, you're still looking at $500 just to start macro photography. Um, and this can prevent a lot of people who would otherwise really enjoy getting into macro photography from having the chance to do it. And, uh, well, that's just not okay with me. So we're going to do our best to try to find some inexpensive ways to get into macro photography. And this is the first thing that popped into my mind. This lens cost about $30. I have no idea if it's going to be good or not. Uh, so let's, let's kind of take a look. All right. So what have we got here? Right here. <laughs> HD smartphone lens. Looks like this thing's made by Apexel. Uh, this one is specifically made for Galaxy phones, uh, but it says compatible with most smart smartphones and tablets. Um, made in China. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's open it up. Take a look. Okay, inside it looks like we've got a little user manual here. Um, we've got what looks like the lens itself right here and uh, the clip that attaches to it. Uh, this lens is designed to actually clip over your phone. It's semi-removable. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, and pop it on a phone and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at what it looks like. All right, guys, it's the next day. So immediately after putting the Apex lens on my phone, I went out and tested it out. I tried to test it under as many conditions as I could think of. Uh, I tested with artificial light, with natural light, um, with a lot of light, with low light. And I even tested the different lenses on my phone. It tells you to use the wide angle lens. Uh, but I did test it on the other lenses as well. So I could test out and try to get the best results possible to see if this was a viable option to get into macro photography. Okay, so for the first test, I had gone outside and I found a daddy long legs and decided to see how much detail I could get out of that. Uh, you could take a look at these shots and you can see how grainy it gets. Um, I suspected that this might be because of low light so I decided to try out some tests indoors. Um, I tested with the actual pamphlet that came with the product and I used artificial light, um, high strength LEDs to try to get as good of an image as I could. Uh, there was a little bit less noise, but still um, the image quality is not the greatest. I tested the macro lens on different phone lenses to see what the best way maybe was to use this to get the maximum magnification. Um, and in my tests, it basically came down to a tie between using it on my wide angle lens or using it at a three times zoom on my standard lens. I got roughly the same magnification. I got roughly the same amount of detail. I did also test this on some video. So I had a hobo spider that was sitting in my windowsill. I decided to see how good of a video I could get of it. Um, this is that video. Uh, you can see it sort of focuses like a traditional macro lens where you have to move closer or farther away from the subject to, uh, to get it to focus. Um, the quality didn't seem that bad when I was recording it, but when I went back and watched it later, it's really not that great. Uh, it was kind of cool being able to zoom in that much, um, but I don't actually think it gave me any more of a zoom than my standard macro mode on my camera. Uh, the other thing is I had to be ridiculously close to the spider to get this video. Uh, my phone was almost touching it. 
if this was any other spider other than a hobo spider who are about the most relaxed spiders on the planet, it would have ran away far before I could have even started the video. The disappointing part is when I tested this against no lens whatsoever. Um, so just using the macro mode that my phone happens to go into when it realizes I'm getting close to something. And disappointingly, I did not really see an increase in magnification or much of an increase in quality compared to not using it at all. Uh, this was really surprising to me because it did seem to add some magnification. So I don't know why when my phone would go into macro mode, why it didn't seem like it was really adding anymore. Overall, my opinion on at least this specific macro lens for phones, I guess you get what you pay for. It was $30. Um, I was hoping for more, but um, realistically probably got about $30 worth of product. Are you going to be able to take close-up shots with this? Uh, yes, you are. Are you going to be able to take shots that are of a higher quality than your phone's standard macro mode? Probably not, at least not with this specific lens. This is unfortunate because I was really hoping that this would work out. I am really trying to find a way for beginners to get into macro photography without having to spend a fortune. I'm not giving up though. This didn't work out. But in the future, we will hopefully find something that will work out. So my overall recommendation on this lens would probably be to, unfortunately, pass it up. So I'd be curious to hear if any of you guys have used a macro lens for a phone before. If you have, and especially if you found one that actually works well, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what that is so that I can test it out on the channel and hopefully bring macro photography to a wider audience. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe if you want to see more. We'll see you next time.